Hey everyone, two-dimensional arrays. It's an array where each element is an entire array. It's useful if you need a matrix, grid, or table of data. Let's begin by creating a simple one-dimensional array of maybe some numbers. So the data type is int, the array name will be numbers, and let's initialize this array with a few numbers, one, two, and three, something simple. So if I would like to store a grid or matrix of data, these elements will be the first row, and I can add a second row. So separate each row with a comma, then another set of curly braces, and then you can add more values. So let's say four, five, and six, and we'll stop here. With these separate arrays, we will surround with a set of curly braces, and preceding the first set of straight brackets, we will add a second set of straight brackets. So this is now a two-dimensional array. However, with a two-dimensional array, we have to specify a maximum size of elements within each of these arrays. Let's say that each of these arrays will have a maximum size of three elements apiece. So within the second set of straight brackets, I will list three. And you can, although it's not necessary, set a maximum amount of arrays within your two-dimensional array. So let's say two, because we have two separate arrays within our two-dimensional array. Now to better visualize how this is more or less a table of data, I'm going to rearrange these. So this may be a better visualization. This first set of straight brackets is for the number of rows. And the second set of straight brackets is for the number of columns. So we have two rows and three columns within our two-dimensional array. Now you can declare a two-dimensional array, but not assign values quite yet. But you'll need to set a maximum size. So right now I'm just going to turn this into one giant comment. And let's declare a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns. And here's how to assign some values. We will type the name of the array followed by two sets of straight brackets. We need a row number and a column number. So the first column within the first row is going to be zero, zero, because computers always start with zero. And let's assign this a value of one. The second column within the first row would be zero, one. And let's assign two there, then zero, two. And that will be number three. So the first column within the second row would be numbers one, zero, and this will be four. Then we will follow the same pattern. So where five was, that would be one, one. And six is one, two. So this is another way to initialize an array. You can set a maximum size and then assign some values later, or you could assign all of the values right from the beginning if you know what they are. Okay, now how can we display the elements of a two-dimensional array? we'll have to use nested loops. So let's create a for loop, and I will declare an index of i, set this equal to zero, and for the time being, I'm going to say i is less than the number of rows that we have. So right now we have two rows, but we're going to change this value later to something that's more flexible that will calculate the amount of rows that we have, and then I will increment i by one. Now let's create a nested loop that's in charge of keeping track of the columns. And let's use an index of j, because we do not want to reuse i. So set j equal to 0. We will continue this as long as j is less than however many columns we have. 3. A maximum of 3. And then increment j by 1. So during each iteration of the inner for loop, let's display one of these elements. So we will use the format specifier for an integer. d is fine. Followed by our array numbers and then we have two indices. So the row is going to be i, and this will begin at zero, and the columns is j. This will also begin at zero. So after each iteration of the inner for loop, we will increase j. When we finish the inner for loop, we will increment i by one. So by using nested for loops, we can iterate over all of the elements of this array. So I'm just going to add a space after our number, and we should probably add a new line after each row. So I'll add a new line. Let's test this. Here we go, we have our table of two rows and three columns. Now there's one situation that we may run into. What if we change the amount of rows and columns that we have? So let's say that we add one more row. Our 2D array of numbers will have three rows and three columns. 
row two, column zero, equal seven. Row two, column one, will equal eight. And row two, column two, will equal nine. So if I were to run this again, well, this last row is not going to be displayed. So it would be better if we can calculate how many rows and columns are within our two-dimensional array. And here's one way to do so. I'm going to declare two new variables, int rows and int columns. And I will set the condition of the outer for loop to be as long as i is less than rows. And the inner for loop will be j is less than columns. Now we just need to calculate what these numbers are going to be. To calculate rows, we can use the size of operator and then pass in the entire size of our two-dimensional array. And we're going to divide this by the size of one of our rows. They're all going to have the same size. So we can pass in our array numbers and then specify one of the rows. Let's say the first row, they're all going to be the same. Okay, so that's how we can calculate the number of rows that we have. Now to find the number of columns, we can copy what we have here and then just make a few changes. So we will say the size of the first row, row zero, divided by the size of one of the elements found within the first row. So we can say zero, zero. And let's print the amount of rows and columns that we have just to test it. So we have rows and columns. I'm just going to add a new line character real quick. Okay, so we have three rows, three columns. And here's our table, three rows with three columns apiece. So yeah, that's basically a two-dimensional array. It's an array of arrays where each element is an entire array. It's useful if you need a matrix, grid, or table of data. And in this example, we made a table of integers, just the numbers one through nine. So there's a couple different ways in which you can initialize a two-dimensional array, but you'll need two sets of straight brackets it's optional to set a maximum number of rows, but it is necessary to set a maximum number of elements within each row. And then to access one of the elements, you use two indices, one for the row, one for the column. So yeah, those are two-dimensional arrays. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, those are two-dimensional arrays in C.